Hi everybody, welcome to another career tutorial. I'm Kripe Man. What we're going to do this time through is we're going to look at our particle creation screen and our particle emitter. Now over the next few tutorial, tutorials I'm going to try and uh, get as much information about the particle emitter out as I possibly can uh, because it's actually probably the coolest uh, feature in Carrera and uh, probably one of the most misunderstood. So um, in the spirit of that, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what makes our particle emitter our particle emitter. Um, first of all, your particle emitter is a nozzle, and it pretty much sprays uh, your particles out the end of the particle emitter, uh, dependent on what your particle creation menu tells it to do. This is your manager. This is the, this is the you know uh, straw boss of the whole of the bunch. Um, it determines the number of particles, their size, their weight, their speed, the angle that they come out of the particle emitter, um, their orientation in flight, and their, rot uh, their orientation uh, coming out, and their rotation in flight. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And what we have here is we're going to do one particle, and it's an object uh, that I made in the spline modeler. Now, something about the particle emitter... Uh, that I don't know, a, a lot of new users don't know. The particle emitter um, started out when, when there was only one scene size in uh, Carrera. So uh, your particle emitter goes by the small scene size. And a lot of your, all, most of the objects that were created in Carrera or in Raydream uh, were done when there were just one, there was just one scene size. So your spline modeler, your vertex modeler, everything responds better uh, feedback wise in the small scene. Okay, with that out of the way, we're in a 30 inch room and each of the squares here are five inches, or, yeah, five inches a piece. So um, let's go ahead and tweak it around. What we're going to wind up, what we're going to try and do is we're going to get this arrow to hit this target. And the, just FYI, there's going to be a little bit of tweaking involved. There, uh, unless you're like a hardcore math geek, um, a lot of these things, uh, it, there's going to be a lot of tweaking involved, just FYI. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, um, if we click to the end of our animation, uh, our arrow is like way above our target. And what we want to do is... Uh, while we're at the end of the animation, let's go ahead and get to our local gravity and start tweaking that down. Let's do minus 10 to start out with. That's pretty much the default gravity. And that's perfect. That puts it right there in the uh, in the center. Cool. Um, but uh, we're probably going to have to throw a little air friction in there, though. Comes out, arcs, and lands right in the center of our of our target. That's what we want. Now, uh, we don't want it to just be thrown flat against the wall. So what we want to do is we want to rotate our our uh, arrow around a little bit. Uh, oh, our velocity is 19 too. I don't know if I said that, but our orientation is kind of key to making it look natural and all that fun stuff. So Let's go ahead and uh, kind of crank this around a little bit. Make our orientation face us 45 degrees. Jump in the middle. Uh, maybe 25 degrees. 25. It's depending on the angle of the camera. Nope. 60 degrees. There we go. Now we'll be able to see this guy coming out. Now, uh, we want it to rotate on the x-axis a little bit. You see how we're oriented here? The particle emitter has a... Uh, the particle emitter is oriented on the color axis that it's oriented in the, in the scene. So, um, red is X going this way. So we want it to rotate on the X axis. We want it to rotate uh, counterclockwise to make it look like that it's arcing naturally toward the toward the target. 
let's go ahead and uh, start playing with some values here. Let's do a minus 90. Let's kind of see what that looks like. And as it comes out backwards, <laughs> it's flipping around. Actually, that might make for a cooler animation. Uh, but it doesn't quite rotate all the way to where the point is touching the, the middle of the X. So let's do 120 and forward, make it move forward a little bit. Ah, no. How about 60? And as you tweak these values around, I actually have a a, a a example loaded up here, and just tweaking this stuff around a little bit is going to is going to uh, you know give you the results you want. That's this is where all this the exact exact positioning happens is this area right here. Now something about this right before I show the example, um, the area right here in your advanced tab, your physics and local gravity and all that fun stuff. Um, that is, uh, that no matter where you are, if, if you change any of these values at any point during your animation, uh, they'll be constant. It, it, it's, it's constant throughout the course of your animation. They can't be changed you know, incrementally or any of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, uh, this is where all the changeable stuff happens over on this side. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at what we got. I've uh, I made an example using the same principle. Change the velocity as you need to. Uh, orient, rotation speed. This right here, something about the rotation speed. This is, you see how your, your arcing is happening here? Let's take a look at this. Now this is a five second animation. Your shorter animations are going to need higher velocities, um, maybe not hit so much on air friction. This this one in particular, I put a little air friction in there. And you see how it kind of just uh, slows things down. So depending on how fast you want your particle to go, uh, you got to crank your stuff around a little bit. So anyway, that's it for this part of it. Um, more cool stuff coming. That's it for this time. I'm Kripe Man, and I'll talk to you again later.